Alright guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to do something a little different. Today we're going to play The Witcher 3 in 2021. <laughs> Man, this game is probably about five years old now. I think this came out in 2016, so... Yeah, let's get into it. Now, I have actually never played this on mouse and keyboard, so... Oh my gosh, man, this game is so beautiful. I think you guys, if you haven't actually played The Witcher 3 before, I think you should. Because it is... Probably, no, it is one of, like, the best games ever, <laughs> in my opinion, at least. When it comes to the story, this game has probably the best story in any game that I have ever played, at least. You know, some people might say... Uncharted is really good, and it is, I love Uncharted. All four of them actually, you know? Um, four was my favorite one, you know, I was very connected to the characters, I loved everyone. I played all four of them. Uh, I'm not counting the, uh, the other one, I forget the name of it. Um, you are connected, you feel like you know these people in this game, you know? You know, it's just a great game. You know, when it comes to content, this game never falls short. Like, you could probably do everything. It'll probably take a long time to actually do everything in this game, you know? And if you were to compare, you know, a game like Skyrim or something, you know, I don't know if you can compare because, you know, this game... This game, it's a, it's an RP, it's a role-playing game, you know, it is a role-playing game, and Skyrim is very, I don't know, it's very broad, because you can play as whatever kind of person you want, you could be a thief, you could be a mage, you could be a normal civilian who doesn't fight anything. <laughs> you can pretty much do whatever you want. But in The Witcher 3, that's not really the case. You... You can... I don't know. You can't really fight people in this game. Like, it actually won't let you kill anyone. Which kind of sucks, because sometimes <laughs> you'd probably want to go in towns and just murder everybody like you do in Skyrim, but you can't do that in this game. Um, we just discovered this town, Boxholm. Uh, I don't know what's here. I think there's a, oh, there's a bear over there. Now, I actually... This is probably my... I don't know, 10th... 11th walkthrough, not walkthrough, uh, playthrough of this game. I played this game a lot of times. <laughs> I beat it around three or four times. I think I did all of the endings, the good, bad ending. And I think there was like a, uh, there was a third ending, I think. But it wasn't really like good or bad. It was like a, in the middle. <laughs> Something like that. You know, if you guys haven't played this game, you really should consider because, I mean, I'm playing on PC, you know, and the graphics are just really good. You know, this game has aged pretty well, even though it has been around five or six years since it came out. But this game will never, it will never look bad in the future. You know, now, there are mods for this game that can enhance the graphics, ray tracing, uh, foliage, for example. 
some other things, but... I mean, it looks great the way it is, you know? I wouldn't really bother if you are just getting into it, of course. But if you are, like, the graphics nerd, you want the best of the best, then go ahead, you know? Um... But there are a few gripes that I have with this game, and just when it, just like when it comes to any game, there are gonna be things that you don't like in it. You know, there's a bear over there. Um, my number one problem with this game is that the movement is really bad. It is just clunky, you know. It is clunky as ever. It's not really fluid, in my opinion. Like, look at this. I'm trying to go over here. Like, and I'm playing on keyboard, right? Even when it comes to controller, it is extremely difficult to, like, stop at a certain area like this or something and just keep moving by accident. It's just. I don't know, it's very clunky, you know, I wish they would have polished it up or something. And I'm sure there's a mod that probably fixes that. I don't know. But, number one, the story. If this game didn't have as good of a story as it does have, then I probably wouldn't care about it that much. Because the story is what makes you want to play more, you know? Like... The graphics are they're good, they're really good, you know, but that's not the main thing that what makes someone want to play a game, you know. You could have the best graphics in the world, you know, and if the game sucks, then what's the point? You know, so... So number one is the story for me. Number two is... I don't know, number two is probably going to have to be the variety of everything. You know, when it comes to the weapons, you have all kinds of weapons. You have crossbows, you have axes, you have bombs, you have all this magic stuff. You got all these armor types. This is one of my favorite sets of armor here. There you go. So, this is the Undvik armor. This is probably my favorite. <laughs> You can get this in, uh, what's it called? Um, it's in Skellige, hold on a second. You get this in, um, Kertrolda. There is a armorer over here and you can buy this from him. And it comes with the, comes with all the armor here. It comes with the saddlebags, horse binders, the horse blinders, and the saddle. Um, it comes with all that, and it's very expensive, so... You know, you gotta have the gold to buy this, but... Once you do buy it, <laughs> it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, even if you play this on, like, PS4 or Xbox... The graphics are still really good, but on PC, you know, it's just better. <laughs> and I don't even think I'm running this on max graphics. Let me see. Um, it's a video graphics. Uh, I don't know what I have this on. I have it on high, so even on high, it looks pretty good. You know, I'm just barely hitting 60 frames. My computer isn't the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like a 3080 or something crazy. Uh, not even just that, probably like a 2060 or even a 1080. You could still run this pretty good with ultra graphics. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, the armor that I have right here, it is like I just love the way it looks. You know, you have like you have a separate layer of like. Like a layer under undercoat here, then you have like a like a like a jacket type thing on the top here. It's like the golden circles or whatever. Then you got the cool boots. It's like a metal graves or something. 
um, like the leather, man. The leather on this, it's just so cool, man, you know? Um, then you got the gauntlets. I love this, like, gold brace. It might be bronze or something. I'm not too sure. Um, then you have, like, the leather straps. Leather pouch, leather gloves. It's just awesome, you know? Um, I think it also comes with the crossbow. I'm not too sure, actually. You have this huge leather strap on his torso, which connects to the... Or connects the swords on here, I believe. Um, but yeah, like, when it comes to uh, all the stuff you can collect, it's just awesome, you know? <sighs> then you have the crafting system in this game is really cool. You have, like, alchemy stuff, substances, like, these are, like, the base to other things you craft. Uh, if you want to craft like a certain armor or something, you would have to have like some of these to build the like, armor piece or sword or whatever. Um, you have alcohol. I believe white gold is used to make like legendary armor or something. Something weird. Then you got bombs. Of course, I don't have all the stuff. <laughs> um, this is actually a newer playthrough that I have, but you can find other like schematics or blueprints to get other bombs. For example, we have enhanced moon dust. So you have different tiers, of course. You have your regular moon dust and you have the enhanced. Then you have the superior, I believe. And then you have something else. I think it might be superior as the last. Or it might be like legendary or something um then you have like decoctions you got all these other all these deco decoctions here I th i'm pretty sure there are like way more than these but i actually never really bothered using these i actually had a playthrough where i told myself i would solely rely on decoctions but i just don't really like use them at all really you know um, but they are super useful like these things are really useful to have if you are playing on the hardest difficulty These will save your life like these will definitely come in handy because I remember that I did a playthrough that I was I was gonna play through the entire game the hardest difficulty You get hit once or twice and you're dead, you know these things really help one of these is actually like really good that I actually sometimes use there was one that if you get hit like a fatal blow will immediately regenerate all your health back I'm not sure if this if it's on here but like even this for example damage dealt to foes regenerates vit vitality right this is really useful if you're playing on the hardest difficulty because if you get hit once half your health is gone you know if you can lay some good hits on the enemy you can get most of your health back um, and if you keep performing actions that consume stamina regenerates vitality that's really good because if you're like using your shield to help defend yourself and you take some hits to your shield boom you get health back you know and this this right here goes absolutely great with this perk here. All these perks here are really nice to have. Um, but taking or draining stamina, which regenerates your health, um, goes absolutely great with the Quen tree here. Now, Quen is your shield. Yeah, this one here. It says creates an active shield, maintaining it and blocking attacks drains stamina, right? But damage absorbed by the shield restores player vitality, right? So basically, <laughs> when you use your shield, it drains stamina, right? Then you get health. But if your shield breaks, you get even more health. That's just, it's really nice to have. And 
one of these perks here on the general tree, um, which is X, it's it's really busted. <laughs> uh, let me see. One of these, if you take a fatal blow, you get like max health. Which one is it? Yeah, this one, Undying. When Vitality reaches zero, it will be restored with a bonus of 100%. <laughs> Uh, it requires one adrenaline point, but you can easily get that. Um, and I will actually try to demonstrate that for you guys right now. So you got this bear here, right? Want a quick save? <laughs> that he's probably going to kill me. So, you know, he hits me, right? And to show the concoction or the decoction here oh I can't use it oops never mind um, but I'm gonna show you my health is gonna reach zero right and when it does I'm gonna instantly get my health back <laughs> actually I'm gonna talk about it. I have to get a journal point so as you see the red bar on the upper left corner it's going up and once it glows red like there that is one adrenaline point okay hopefully this bear doesn't die please don't die okay he's not gonna die so my health is about to reach zero see i got most of my health back so and as you see my adrenaline point is now gone so that is really useful if you play on the hardest difficulty you know and what difficulty am I even playing on? I am on the... Okay, I'm on the... Medium... Intermediate difficulty, so the, the basic difficulty, right? Man, this game is so beautiful, guys. You really gotta play this. Now... Some of you guys may be thinking, like, Why are you playing this, man? I thought you were... Call of Duty guy, you know? I'm just tired of Call of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty stresses me out sometimes, you know? Uh, this is another thing I love about this game. Even when it comes to Skyrim or something, you could be roaming around the map, right? And boom, you come across a random thing like this here. This is a, a hidden treasure, I believe. So we have silver plated key then we have an old yellow paper or old yellow letter you read it here uh, i'm not going to read through this you guys can pause it if you want but basically this guy's dead apparently he hid some treasure for his son or something yeah he gave some he had like a a will or something for his son so, we're gonna play this. We're gonna play this quest here Inheritance. Find the treasure chest using your Witcher Sense. Um, so, we hold this here. So, we got the guy who's dead here. Wait, does he have something else? Oh, no. Okay, so. Oh, I think that's it over here. So it's locked, so I use a silver plated key, and boom, look at that, simple, quick, easy quest. We got some nice goodies here, take that, so let's see what we got here, oh, wrong button, there we go. So we got the blood sword, now this is better than my, uh, Vindal. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but let's check this out, shall we? So, it is the weapon on my right, I believe. That's the silver sword. So, if you can see here, now it is it has like a red sheath with like a silver band on the top. And the new sword we got has a 
black leather sheath with a bronze-ish band. Um, okay, how do I... There we go, so this is the blood sword. And if we go in the... Um, let me see here. There we go, so this is the blood sword has a bronze hilt here, or a hilt, I'm not talking about, a pummel, a bronze leather wrapped handle, I think, and he put the sword away, that's great. <laughs> we got some deer over here, crow's eye, oh look at all the wild horses out there. I don't even know how to put my sword away, so... Oh, there we go. So, cool thing, if we use uh, Axie, for example, you can use it on a horse. And guess what? You can get on the horse. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So, Axie is really nice to have. If you want to tame an animal or something. Um, I like I was saying that. Let me get back to the crafting system or something. So the decoctions, right? Um, I can't actually make any. Now these do regenerate. So I'm pretty sure I have some of these already actually. Yeah. Like I said before, these are really nice to use, especially in the harder difficulties. Um, and this is damage dealt is increased when vitality is at its maximum. So this is really nice to have, especially in the harder difficulties, because if you have max health and you hit an enemy, <laughs> it'll do more damage. And it says you get 50% increased damage, so almost double damage, you know? What is this? Geralt's maximum vitality is increased with each foe killed. This increase lasts until he meditates for fast travel. So, basically, if you kill an enemy, you get more health. <laughs> you know, these things are great to have. And these oils here, um, oils are very, they're, they are very lucrative to use. Especially in harder difficulties, like I always say. Um, for example, if we were to use this, it does 25% more damage on necrophages. So necrophages are like water hags, um, uh, drowners, stuff like that. It'll do 25% more damage, right? And the hangman's, the hangman's venom... So the weird thing is, all of these oils you can only really use on the silver sword, but this does more damage against humans and non-humans, which are like bears, wolves, stuff like that. So put that on here, and you do 25% more damage. Uh, keep in mind, these are the enhanced versions, so the yellow hue behind the oils is the enhanced versions. The blue is the regular ones. So we have the stock oils, for example. And we don't really have anything else to show. Like we don't have anything better than um, enhanced. Now you have the reddish orange on hues behind some of these things, for example, my swords. Um, if you look at the bottom here, the orange text, it says relic. These are basically like antiques. Um, it doesn't, as far as I know, they don't really like, they are probably about the same as a legendary weapon, but essentially the relics are one of a kinds, I believe. So, 
for example, Daystar, I believe you can only get Daystar in a relic form. You can't get like a Daystar in a superior or legendary or enhanced version or whatever. It comes as is, essentially. Let's get back to the alchemy things here. So we have the oils now. We have all different types of oils. Um, so the superior here. Now, I can't really tell, but I'm pretty sure it has about the same color. This might be a little more reddish compared to this one. But the superior items have like a glow around the item itself. So as you see here, the Enhanced Cursed Oil, for example, is a stock picture, but with a yellow glow behind it, a yellow hue. And if you look at the Superior Cursed Oil, it has a bit darker tone behind and a, like a glow around the item itself. So as you can see here, same picture, but it looks cooler. Then we're going to go to the potions. Now the potions, there are a lot more potions than this, but all I have right now are like the regular ones. So, one of my favorite potions to use is the White Rafford's Decoction. This is one of my favorites, and I actually don't have it because I need two Necker Hearts, and it can be hard to get, um, but the reason why I love this one so much is because it immediately restores a portion of your health, right? If you look here, the enhanced version of the White Rafford's decoction, it restores a large portion of your health compared to a regular portion. Um, I'm not sure if there is a superior version of this. Because I don't think I actually like found it, but this is really good to have. Um, there might be a superior version. I'm not too sure though. Um, then to the crafting system, that's like was the alchemy is the crafting as well, but this is like the the ingredients, you know, <laughs> the liquids, I should say. So we got the regular alchemy. And then we have the regular crafting system, so all of these items that I have you can find in the game. Um, some you do come with, like stock, when you first start. I think you get like tracker boots or something you can make, but most of these you're going to find in the world. Like in treasure chests, or you can buy them off of armorers, or blacksmiths so you have your regular crafting components here you have your ingots your leathers your ores you have all this stuff and all of these items you will use to craft a lot of armors for example if you were to use the infused lizard hide or the the enriched dimeridium ingot these are very hard to make. <laughs> they're hard to make, they're expensive to get, and usually these are going to be used to build like the legendary witcher sets, armor sets, and legendary swords. So you're not going to be using those too much, but you were to take a look at something like, I don't know, the Sedarian Gambeson, for example. These you can easily find in like chests or something. But these are going to be your basic ingredients. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it's ingredients. They're not really something you can eat. <laughs> uh, basic materials, you know, the required materials. <laughs> So we have your linen, your cured leather, your leather straps, and your thread. I have 10 of 4 of the linen and like 93 <laughs> leather straps, so 
can easily build these. Um, oh, I didn't realize. So you can actually only make these things at a blacksmith's forge. So you can't actually build this stuff by hand out in the woods because it wouldn't really make sense. So yeah, but you can make alchemy ingredients anywhere. So you don't have to be anywhere like a blacksmith or something to make these. You just have to be at a blacksmith's forge to build these things, so... And swords. You got your crafting components. You have your crossbow bolts. So... I don't really use a crossbow at all, really. I just don't really find it useful, but... There is a... Um... Let me see. There's a whole, like... Like, there are perks that you can get to increase damage for your crossbow, but I never use them. I've never, like, out of all of my playthroughs, I have never bothered with this. I've also never bothered with the alchemy tree. I just don't really care about that stuff. Um, one of these days I'll probably get to it eventually, but... I just don't really care about it that much. But in the general branch, you have... Trick shot, you can shoot... One more additional bolt before you reload. That's pretty nice to have. Crossbow bolts deal 25% more damage. That's nice to have, you know. So, personally, I just don't really, you know, care about that type of stuff. But, uh, you have it. <laughs> it's nice to have the variety, you know. So, you have the bolts and you have your gauntlets. Same thing goes for the chest armors, you know. You gotta have your basic materials to build the stuff. Um, you have all your stats here. Stats are really important, you know, some people might not care. But they can be very nice to have, especially when you stack stats. For example, if you have, like, um, 2% resistance to piercing damage, if you have, say if this was like 10%, right? If you have 10% resistance to piercing damage on your gauntlets, then 10% on your chest armor, 10% on your boots, then your trousers, you could have 40% resistance to piercing damage. So stats are pretty nice to have, they're really important, you know. So we have our swords here, we have this junk. Um, you can use this to, I'm not too sure what a haft is used for, but whatever. So we have our silver swords. Now, like I said before, there are tons of different silver swords in this game. You have your basic ones that you can get from blacksmiths or something, swordsmiths. You have your blueprints you can find across the world, different chests. Then you have your regular sword that you actually start the game with. So you have your Viper Silver Sword. Um, I think that's the one you start with. I'm not too sure. Then we have our regular Steel Swords. And these are used to kill humans and animals. Um... Personally, I don't really, like, care too much about the steel swords, you know, as long as you got a good one, that's cool. But I feel like most of the time you're going to be fighting, like, monsters, so having a good, reliable silver sword is nice, you know. And don't always look at damage. Damage is great, but stats are also great, <laughs> you know, so I don't have a, like, a really good sword to show you guys. I mean, I can show you this, so the day star, for example, 121 damage, and it goes from that to 147 damage. Then you have negative 13 damage, so basically, what I know is, when it has a negative damage number in red, that means you're not doing as much damage as you can do, because you have 
um, like weapon health and armor health. So if you were to take this to a blacksmith to have it repaired, or you can use a repair kit yourself. So you put this on here. As you see, it has negative 13 damage and it has 60% health on the bottom here. You would have put this on here. Now you don't have any negative damage, but you still have 75% health for your sword. I put this one here again, 90%. Now I'm not going to use it this one because this is a better version. This restores 40% of your item durability, so we can use this one here. So we have 100% durability now, right? So, but like I was saying, damage is great, but stats are greater. <laughs> you have 6 fire damage. You have a 8% chance to cause burning and 2% bonus gold. So if you were to use your Ignis, not Ignis, if you were to use your Igni or your flames and hit, do some hits with this, the guy's going to get burnt to death, you know, do a lot of fire damage. Now, a lot of the relic weapons and um, Master items, they do have a lot of stats, but for example, this this is a base silver sword, there's nothing special with it, only does damage. Now I do have a runestone on here, and oil, that's why you're seeing two stats on here. You know, I can't really take them off, oh, switched it by accident, so, but now, if my armor here had runestone slots, I would definitely put this on here, but I can't because it doesn't have any slots for it. Now, these do, and I don't want to put that on there because I don't. I'm not going to use these. I'm probably going to sell these or scrap them. But like I was saying, you have your swords, your steel swords. Um, now, another cool thing when it comes to the Witcher items. For example, we have the Griffin Steel Sword. Now, the Witcher items have, I think, four or five tiers. So you have your regular Witcher Sword, you have your enhanced version, which is green. Or, not, I'm sorry, not green. So you have your enhanced version, you have the superior version, then you have the Mastercraft version. Now, unless you have the DLCs for this game, you can't, you're not going to be able to get the Grandmaster version. Now, if you don't have the DLCs, you're stuck with the Mastercraft, which is the highest in the base game, right? But if you get the DLCs, you can, get, you can go to the Grandmaster version. Now, the cool thing about the Grandmaster items here if you have, so for example, we have the Griffin version, we have the Griffin um, like set. If you have all, if you have three pieces of Griffin Witcher armor, you can get this bonus here. And if you have all six pieces of your Griffin armor, you get this. You get both bonuses, and they're very nice because you get all these perks down here. So that's the cool thing about the Grandmaster Witcher armor sets. You have your tool set, your repair kits. We have the amateurs, so these do 15%. Um, you have other versions that restores like 100% durability. Um, then you have your trousers. Same thing goes for all the other armor sets that require parts. Then your runestones here, the upgrades. Runestones, for example, this one does uh, 20 armor piercing damage, so you can put this on your sword. Um, but yeah, that's as far as I can go, because I don't really have a lot of stuff to show, but... Um, then you have your glossary here. Your, you have all the letters you collect. 
all your books you collect throughout the game, pictures, etc. All these books here. You have all the characters you encounter, so every time you meet someone new, they're going to pop up in your glossary. All the... See, all the main characters, essentially. So you have that. Then you have the bestiary. Now, these are all of the enemies you encounter in the game. You have your regular beasts, such as the dogs, wolves, bears, and you have cursed ones. Berserkers, botchlings, whatever that word is, and werewolves. Um, all these guys are specifically vulnerable to certain things. For example, Elementa. If you were to fight a gargoyle, for example, it shows you what they are vulnerable against. So you can use Quinn. Um, I'm not too sure why they would have Quinn on here because it's just a shield, but you know, you could be fighting a griffin or something, right? They like to fly around, so if you were to use your Ard and you can blow them out the sky, right? It'll be easier to fight them, so. So you can use this to your advantage if you in case you forget which enemy is vulnerable to what, so. Very nice thing to have. You have your vampires, all that stuff. So then we have the world map here. Oh, the world map! This game's a map. The game, this game's world is awesome, man. Like we are in Skellige here, which is mostly islands. So. Every question mark you see is a place that you haven't been to. You have the yellow like paper with the exclamation mark. These are notice boards. So you can go to these notice boards and pick up bounties. Um, they will always have a, a side mission to do. Unless it's not yellow anymore, of course, so... But... Yeah, you can take a boat, sail across the ocean, go everywhere you want. Except like, you know, you probably can't go over here because there's like a boundary, of course. There's a little, there's like two little islands over here. <laughs> um, but I won't really spoil anything for you guys in case you do want to play this game in the future, but... Um, but yeah, we have the regular map here, which is Galaga. Then if you go to the world map, you have Velen. Now, Novigrad and... sorry. Um, now... Hold on a second here. So, Novigrad and Velen. I don't know why it shows two here, but they are basically just one map. So, Velen is, Velen is all of, like, besides this big city here, all of the land here is Velen. So this is all Velen here. It's all Velen, so, Novigrad is just this big city here. Now, <laughs> why they have Novigrad as a separate place on the world map, I will never know, but, yeah, this is all Novigrad. It's a part of Velen, so yeah. As you can see, on this account, I haven't really been to a lot of places. Except here. Now, I actually went on like an expedition, per se. I went all across the land here to discover everything I possibly could. And I got tired and I just gave up. Because <laughs> it takes a while. It takes a long time to do all this stuff, you know? Um, yeah, this area down here, you have Oxenfurt, which is another little small city here. Doesn't even compare to Novigrad. <laughs> this is like the New York City of that one, you know what I'm saying? So, you have this place here, Banglebud Residence. I love this place. Um, very beautiful scenery. 
Um, you have all this farmland out here. Very nice place. So keep in mind that also you have Care Morton here, which is like the place you start the game in. So you have all these places here, right? All these places you can go to are a part of the base game. This is all base game here, so you can go to these places as you progress in the, in the game storyline. So, but this place down here, the Duchy of Toussaint. This is a DLC map. Um, unless you have the DLC, you can't come here. But this place is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but this place is a mixture of France and Italy and Spain or something crazy. But it's a little mixture of like Alice in Wonderland because it's really, it's beautiful guys. Definitely come here if you get this game. And like I said, if you get this game, make sure you get the Legendary Edition because it comes with all the DLCs, all the uh, DLC weapons and armor sets and stuff. And, but there is one thing I will say. When you get the DLC, this place, this map here, is going to be where you will get the Grandmaster armor sets. So, you can get all the cool perks and bonuses for the Grandmaster stuff. So, yeah, so that is the map. Um, it's kind of crazy because if you look at Scalaga, it's kind of like gray and blue, very bleak color. If you go to Duchy Toussaint, it's very yellow. You can tell it's very sunny just by looking at the colors of the map. So, and if you go to Vellin, it's very nasty, swampy, especially over here. So, yeah. But that is really all. And, you know, we have. Regular side missions you can go to for this guy here. He has a side quest for us, I believe. Let's hear what he has to say. I interrupt. Nay, my prayers are in vain, anyways. You have a dialogue options. I can help you one of two ways. First, I can try to convince whoever put up the nithing to lift the curse themselves. Second, I can deflect the curse back on whoever cast it by writing their name on the shaft. Either way, need to know who's behind this. But I don't trouble no one. Don't know a soul who'd wish it upon me. Mm -hmm. Guess I gotta investigate. So we actually already spoke to this guy before this video, so... But if you were to first encounter him, he would have a lot more stuff to say. And there will be a lot more questions you can ask him, but um, this is his son, I believe, that he wants us to help cure this little house here. Um, but yeah, we're not going to do this mission because this video is probably 20 minutes long already. Probably longer. Guys, come on. If you've never played this game before, you got to. It's absolutely one of a kind, in my opinion. You know, you got The Witcher. The original, then you got The Witcher 2. I've never played the first two, so I don't really know how this compares to the others. But there's one thing I do know. is that this game is absolutely amazing it is absolutely fantastic as a masterpiece you need to play it like now <laughs> um but you know you could definitely get caught up in this game for a long time just in the story itself you know but that's pretty much it guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, something different, because I am getting tired of Call of Duty, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out, 
So I really would love to continue doing videos. So hit that bell notification to let you guys know when I'm going to upload. And uh, I will see you guys next time, yeah?